Let's press for the next. Will you give me 40 minutes on this matter? It is a burden that comes, that came as a result of where we are in the spirit now. And I thank all of you that is always here. Part of the reason why God teaches us what he's teaching us is because we have shown ourselves competent or rather compliant. We have shown ourselves yielded to his demands. If not, why will God be teaching you when he knows that you have no plans to act on it? Are you getting the point? So over time we have shown that we are willing to act if God will give us more wisdom. We are willing to act if he will give us more insight. It is on that, that basis that God reveals more to us. If not, the ones that he has shown you 10 years ago, 15 years ago, what have you done with it? So you have not shown an attitude of consistency in giving yourself to the present instructions and revelations of the Holy Spirit. He will stop. I mean, God is as powerful as how much you obeyed the one he said yesterday. Before a new one comes, they must check your measure of obedience. And many times before God reveals a new thing, I hope you know that, have you heard the scripture said when your obedience is complete, it means that obedience is measured. You know, God can tell you to do something and when they throw your response on the scales, one of the things you will notice is that you will find that your obedience is just 40%. You just made the cut of mark. And because you just, and there are people that know that, they are just making the cut of mark. And because they just made the cut of mark, what God is doing, God will continue to just manage them and be working. Are you getting the point? You can know that God is managing somebody, managing a situation. Not that this is God's exact expectation and standard concerning the matter and concerning the person. If you help me, say amen. amen. You will notice that God's revelation, God's effulgence, God's ability to break out on the same matter, break out on the same person we intensify when your measure of obedience intensifies. So somebody can, can escalate his obedience from 40 to, to 60 percent. 40 is passed, 60 is passed, but are they the same thing? So there are many demands of God that will come upon a land, come upon a territory, come upon a generation, come upon people, and many people will make the cut off mark. And then they will start selecting people based on their measure of obedience. And they will go and peg it at 70. When they ask you, you say you can pray, I can pray. They ask you, can you pray? You say yes. Can you give? You say yes. Can you fast? Can you? So since everybody can do the same thing, does it mean we should allow everybody? It means we should increase the quota. The measure of obedience will now increase. So some people will come and tell you it's not about how long. That prayer is not about how long. Who told you? They say it's quality. There is no real quality in prayer without quantity. There is no real quality in prayer. In fact, God measures your compliance to intimacy based on how much time you invest with him. Intimacy is how much time. You say you don't pray for long. And somebody will say it's, it's intimacy. If you are praying and you have, once you gain ascension, you have bound your spirit organically with the spirit that, that raised Jesus from the dead. That is oppression from the point of ascension. Such an oppression is not the activity of the flesh. And as I've taught you people repeatedly, the prayer endeavor of the believer in the New Testament context is not something that comes from the holy place, even though that can produce a result. By the time we get to the book of Hebrews chapter 9, we found out that the altar of incense was inducted. Part of the things that became the inductees eh, that came as a result of resurrection were the altar of incense and the menorah. These were the things that were moved from the holy place into the holiest of all. It means that a prayer that exactly mirrors the intent and the heart of God has to be something from the spirit. Are you getting the point? That's what the holiest of all means. It's from the spirit. And that is why when you begin to pray, you can start praying in tongues. But when you gain ascension, at that point, organically, your spirit is functioning in union with the Holy Ghost. 
for he that is joined with Christ is one spirit organically you begin to function from there huh? when a man prays from there ah, that man is having intimacy having intimacy is not about whether you are quiet or not sometimes I will shout and then the glory of God will come sometimes I will shout nothing will happen I will just be quiet and say Jesus Jesus are you getting the point the main thing is to gain ascendance once it is once your activity is being ad governed from the throne of the Christ once the grace once the power that is motoring your activity is an administration from the throne of the Christ leave it you can't make mistake that way you can't pray by the energy of the spirit you can't pray by by the energizings and quickenings and promptings and impressions of the spirit and be wrong you cannot because as of that point the holy ghost is the one that is making that endeavor and that is why when we are praying we are making sure that the holy spirit is the one that any attempt for the flesh to we cut it off huh? and many times for we to do it you have heard me say it sometimes i'll say help me holy ghost help me not to be distracted help me holy ghost help me not to give up help me holy ghost help me not to stop now huh if you think if you think long time in prayer is not it i think we need to re, we need to revoke the life that the apostles and jesus lived do you know how many times the bible said jesus prayed all night and some people came and said you don't count time you count unfortunately you can't find that statement in the bible what you will find in the bible is that time was counted when jesus many times and I'm, I'm, i don't want to quote the apostle jesus took them to the mountain to pray say why can't you watch with me for what that means prayer is quantified if you like don't quantify your prayer you will never be effective in prayer until it becomes regimented you have to, nobody nobody becomes effective in prayer until he regiments his prayer sometimes you have put your alarm by 12 in the night eh? let it be written before god and men that you will pray for at least one hour you are saying it's not about time you are not serious you don't want to grow your prayer life that's the indiscipline that make people they don't grow and satan is doing everything to weaken the move of prayer in the body of christ because that's the most effective thing now that we have and he wants to may you not be used may you not find out later that you are fighting the same thing you are hoping it will come you can't have enough of bible study anybody you can't have enough as long as it's the only thing you'll be doing is let's make sure it's correct you can't have enough of prayer the only thing we do is let's make sure it counts can't have enough you can't have enough of if you study this Bible and think you know, by the time you are about to die, you will find studying, start finding out that you don't know this Bible as much as you think. And I speak about heavy men that we we they have the mantles of revelation. There are men that have walked this path. Eh? I'm not just talking about the apostles in the Bible. I mean men that has walked this earth. There are people I feel that they are. If you ask me, they are direct descendants of Apostle Paul. Huh? Oh, people like watchman me people like Theodore Austin Sparks Austin Sparks is both friend and contemporary with watchman me if you read their books many of them if you have read the book you will find out that this person quotes sometimes he borrows from this person this person borrows from this person and they mostly meet at the Keswick convention they know and that is why when you begin to read the letter books of T. Austin Sparks, the ones he wrote when, when Watchman was in prison, you will see he's trying to, he's trying to mirror the experience of the man in his writings. Oh, heavy man. But by the time Austin Sparks was rounding up in the 60s and 70s, he said, you see, my see God began to show him that he didn't know much about the scripture. That now he found out the cry of Paul. Huh? That I may know you the power of your resurrection the fellowship of your suffering 
if by any means I'll be made conformable unto your death. Huh? What is he talking about? Is it this physical death? When he said, I'm ready to be offered. He's not talking about this physical death. This is 33 years of ministry. And a man said, I want to know you. We don't know. You can't have enough. You can't have enough for prayer. Huh? As I will show you about Samuel. Even before Samuel died, he said, I will keep praying for you. He said, let him be abomination if I don't rise up and pray for the land of Israel. His soul is bound to the land. His destiny, his rank in God increases when he intercedes for the land. When you come and tell these people, why are you not giving up on Nigeria? Why are you not giving up on Easter? You will not understand. They, they, their destiny is not fulfilled if they don't cry and weep for the land. The testimony of the book of Ezekiel chapter 9 will be the testimony of such rank of men. The Bible said that the angel, the instruction is that they told the angel, move through the length and breadth of the land, carry your ink horn. Hmm? Move through the length and breadth of the land. Find the men that groan and sigh for the wickedness that is in the land. Put a mark on them. And prophesy, you know, do what? Put a mark on them. There are men that groan and sigh. The very future of the land is dependent on them continuing in their business. God will do everything to make sure they continue in their business. Day and night, they are praying. Two hours in the night, two in the day, two in the evening, every day. Fasting. Three days, two days, seven days, six to six, six to nine, six to twelve in the night. When they finish this week, next week they join. You go back, they say, this is your prayer. Does it not finish? As long as God has a purpose upon the face of the earth. As long as there are men that left their office, left. As long as there are men that God called everywhere and they are not doing what they are supposed to do. God might have to give you the portion of seven men to carry. Have you not noticed? Many times what you are doing in your family is your father's calling or your mother's calling. But they ran away. So you are now bearing her body. Her body she should have bared. And when she has born it, it will cater for all of you that is the children. Are you getting the point? When you bear your own, you cater for your children. So you will now bear it and cater for her, cater for your father, cater for your brothers and sisters, and then cater for your children. So when you come and pray for three hours, when you finish, God will say, give me more time. So you will understand what he's saying. I'm not saying you I'm not saying this thing for you to be despondent. I'm telling you that that pathway is the pathway of authority, is the pathway of rank in the kingdom, is the pathway of stature. When you do it for six months, you look back, you find that you are not the one that started. You might not be seeing it a day after another, but check after six months. You are not the one that started. God will now begin to make the words in your mouth powerful. When you cancel those your brothers, they will listen to you for no reason. When you tell them stop, they will stop because you are not speaking. Help me out of that. You are not speaking from the physical realm. You are speaking from the, from the authority you have gathered from obeying God for long. Are you with me? 